Hello everyone. Today we have an incredible story from Valerie, who shares her near-death experiences. Valerie had two main experiences, the first in 1987 and the second in 2011. In her second account, Valerie describes a vision of World War III and a beautiful heavenly city. Welcome to our channel, where we share interesting near-death experience stories and videos related to spirituality. If you're not subscribed to our channel, please subscribe now. Enjoy the story. My first near-death experience happened in Venezuela on a Sunday, August 9th, 1987. That day, two incredible things happened. I had a craft business and Sundays were usually the day to fulfill orders, paint pieces, and do laundry. My husband had taken the kids to the park to ride bikes and then to his mother's house so he would be home late. After working during the day, I went to the kitchen and, to my surprise, saw that my husband had left tools on the kitchen counter. This made me angry, and I said out loud, Damn it! Today is the day my husband doesn't leave things in their place. I started picking up the tools and, at that moment, heard a voice telling me, That's it! Put everything in its place! I turned to the kitchen door and saw a man looking at me, smiling, dressed in a white tunic with a golden strap around the waist. He had wavy hair that almost touched his shoulders. I wasn't scared. Then he disappeared. I picked up the tools, put them in the box, and stored them in the cabinet under the stairs in front of the kitchen. As soon as I closed the door, I realized I was alone at home. My God! If they left the door open and someone got in, I thought. I ran to the kitchen, grabbed a knife to defend myself in case someone attacked me, and started locking all the doors. I locked the front door, the garage door, the patio door, and checked all the rooms, closets, and bathrooms downstairs. Then I went upstairs and did the same in the bedrooms. Finally, when I entered my own bedroom, I began to feel an inexplicable uncertainty. I then remembered that the figure at the door was leaning as if on one foot, and I realized I hadn't seen any feet. Writing this, I get chills remembering how I ran through the house. The figure was floating, unmoving, and then I realized it was Jesus of Nazareth, just as described, without wounds or a crown of thorns. This calmed me. Entering the bedroom, I told myself it would be better to stay there and be done. I took the remote control, turned on the TV, and started watching a movie. I didn't even want to take a shower, fearing someone was in the house, and left it for when my husband returned. I watched TV for about an hour and a half and felt that my husband had arrived. Great! They've arrived, I thought, and continued lying down. At that moment, I saw a beautiful bright light approaching the bedroom window. A female voice with an authoritative tone said, We are coming to get you. At that moment, my husband was taking the kids to their respective rooms and then coming to our room. Before he opened the bedroom door, I was out of my body and tried to return but couldn't. The light ball almost entered the room through the window and I felt my body very heavy and couldn't move. I observed myself, ran towards my husband, who hadn't yet opened the door, and was already beside him in the corridor. He couldn't see or hear me. I ran back to the bedroom and saw my body but couldn't move. I was frozen but felt a lot of heat inside. Then my husband opened the door. The light was still there. I tried to talk to him, but he didn't help me. He bent down and started observing me, then got up and went to the kitchen. I tried to move again and couldn't. I left my body again and ran to the kitchen but couldn't go down the stairs. I ran back to the bedroom and the light was closer to the window. I felt that the maid had arrived with her daughter, who was asleep. I called the maid, but she didn't hear me. The maid passed by me and didn't see me. I ran to my daughter's room, started caressing her and speaking some words, but she didn't wake up. I caressed her hair, kissed her, and she moved but didn't wake up. I ran again to try to go to the kitchen but couldn't. I ran to my son's room, and he didn't hear me either. The curious part is that I never opened the doors. I didn't know how I was entering the rooms. I ran to the maid's room, tried to call her, but she didn't hear me. I hit the maid, asked for help, but nothing. I ran back to the bedroom, looked at my body, and entered it but couldn't move. I was conscious but completely frozen. I left my body again, went to the beginning of the stairs, and from there, 
I could see the kitchen door. I saw my husband eating crackers with cheese and ham and drinking a glass of cold milk. I screamed at him to stop eating and come help me, but he didn't hear me. I decided to return to my body, as I realized no one could help me but myself. I entered my body, the heat was intense, and at the same time I felt very heavy. I felt the bed sinking and could fall to the lower floor because of the weight. The light started moving away, and my husband entered the bedroom. He got close to the bed and started observing me. I asked for help, but he didn't hear me. He knelt and continued observing me. I started praying the Lord's Prayer, and suddenly I realized I was reciting it out loud. When I reached the part, our daily bread, I returned to normal life, still cold. Suddenly, I felt a strong impact and a loud sound, like when a big machine suddenly jams, something like track, 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 coming from my heart. I opened my eyes and told my husband, well, you're crazy. They were trying to take me away through the window, and instead of helping me, you were just eating and didn't help me. I told him I was very hot and asked him to accompany me to the bathroom, as I didn't want to be alone. He touched me and felt that I was sweating a lot and very cold. He told me to drink water. He had brought a glass of water, and I, still in bed, drank it and poured some over my head before going to take a shower. I didn't want to sleep, fearing they would come to get me and stayed up all night. My second experience happened in Miami, Florida, on November 12, 2011. I was writing and reading emails around 9 p.m. A little before 10 p.m., I got up and told my husband, Good night. I'm going to sleep. I'm bored. He asked why so early since I usually go to bed around midnight or later. I responded again, Good night. I'm bored. And went to the bedroom. I lay down in the usual position, face up, and fell asleep. I didn't know how long I had been asleep when I left my body and immediately found myself in World War III. The weapons I saw were completely strange and different from conventional weapons, and the devastation was horrible. There were dead people everywhere, destroyed roads, buildings, children, animals, trees, and the water was contaminated. The world was deplorable and I died. I returned to my body and told myself I needed to go back and see more. I left my body again and saw many wounded and mourning people, and much devastation. Suddenly, I found myself back in my body and began to feel that all the molars in my lower jaw had been removed, and I felt much pain. It felt like my neck was being pulled with ropes towards my shoulders, with much pain between both shoulders. At the same time, I felt as if a belt was tightening me from the shoulders to the start of my nipples. I was frozen and motionless. Then I realized my husband was in bed. I tried to move and couldn't. I left my body again, flew quickly at an incredible speed, and found myself in front of God. I explained to him that I still had things to do, and bang, I returned to my body in milliseconds. I no longer felt pain, but I felt much peace. I tried to move again and couldn't. I returned to God, pure energy, and explained that I was alive but couldn't move, and bang, I immediately returned. The belt felt tighter, but I didn't feel pain. I began to feel they were placing a chip about a foot in size in my right forearm, passing through my chest and coming out of my left forearm. The chip was made of transparent material with many transparent little points. When they were inserting the chip, I felt as if energy was being transferred to my body, like when seismographs detect and record an earthquake. The lines were very close on a legal-sized white sheet of paper that was passing around me, and I heard the noise of a great turbine, something like whoosh. I didn't feel pain, and then I could move the little finger of my right hand. I was still stiff and cold when I touched my husband. He immediately jumped out of bed, thinking it was a lizard that had gotten into the bed. Turning on the light, I said through clenched teeth, call the ambulance, call the ambulance. He heard me and called 911. I got out of bed in any way I could, looking like a robot walking to the living room. I told him again, through clenched teeth, that I didn't feel pain but that my whole body was stiff. I asked him to tell the operator it was a heart attack and he did. When the ambulance arrived, I was feeling calmer but still felt I wasn't myself. They asked who was ill and I responded, me, through clenched teeth. They asked if I felt pain, 
and I said no but still felt stiff and very cold. But I wasn't cold. The paramedics took my vital signs, and to everyone's amazement, everything was fine. They asked if I could walk to the ambulance, and I said yes. I thought that if I said no, it could take longer, and I couldn't let the minutes pass because there were two cars to move to let the ambulance back up, and then they would have to wait to bring down the gurney. As best as I could, I went down the three steps and took six steps to the ambulance. There, they told me to lie down, which I did very carefully. I was still stiff. One paramedic started to pinch and inject my right hand, while on the left, another paramedic placed the clamp to measure oxygenation. I told the paramedic that I was starting to feel the pinching in my right hand because she couldn't find the vein. I always donate blood, and it was the first time they didn't get my vein quickly. She had pinched me six times. The guy on the left asked if I was allergic to aspirin, and I said no. The guy on the right told me they were giving me three children's aspirins and to take them with this little glass, so I did. They asked if I was taking any medicines, and I explained that I didn't have a thyroid gland as it had been removed with a radiation pill. I felt something wanting to come out of me and vomited something black or intense wine-colored, like a liver with a gelatinous mass. I vomited to the left of the paramedic. At that moment, my spirit sat down and left the ambulance, starting to fly quickly. I heard one paramedic tell the other to remove the pantyhose. I tried to hold on to it, but then I found myself inside an immense salmon-colored dome and saw far away, a beautiful city. I turned around and saw my body on the gurney inside the ambulance, another ambulance behind this one, and farther back, my husband driving the car. I didn't care about this. I only wanted to continue my flight to the beautiful city. I heard many people calling my name, but I only wanted to continue my journey to the beautiful city. I found myself inside the hospital, with many tubes on my face, listening to voices and continuing my journey to the beautiful city. I turned and saw my husband talking to a man in a suit and white shirt inside an office, far from where my body was. At the same time, I saw around 25 people around my body and continued flying. I started hearing the sound of silverware, but they were surgical instruments, feeling they were sounding inside my sternum. I continued flying and, at the same time, told my husband, Tell him I don't have a thyroid and that I take artificial hormones. The man asked if he knew what medicines I took, and he said he didn't remember. I told him to say the name of the medication and the number of milligrams, but he didn't hear me. I said it louder so the man would hear me, but nothing. I tried to take my husband's hand, but my hand went through his hand, and I screamed, You can answer that I take the medication. I continued flying, and then he answered with the name of the medicine, and the man wrote it down. During my flight to the beautiful city, which was now closer, a large salmon-colored block fell in front of me. I flew around it to pass, and my journey continued. Once closer to the city, another block fell diagonally, as if the block was hindering my arrival in the city. This happened five times, and each time the block was much bigger, and the city more beautiful and closer. Just when I was ready to enter the great city, a big voice, something like when a big thunder comes down and booms strongly, in a very authoritative form and very loud, said my name. I started to feel an incredible force, like a big turbine pulling me back. Just as I was returning, I could see the moon and a big transparent being, like a jellyfish, holding the moon over its head and the planet Earth between both feet. I didn't see the same people around me as before. Instead, other people were taking my body to another room. I saw my husband outside, sitting down with tears in his eyes. He was a little away from where they were taking my body. They put me on a bed, and I didn't have tubes in my throat. I opened my eyes and said, What is going on? I was so serene, with great peace inside me and much security. A nurse said I couldn't get up, called, and a doctor arrived. He was one of the doctors I saw when my body was surrounded by about 25 people around the gurney. He asked me how I felt, and I told him very calmly, I'm fine, no pain at all. Then he told me I couldn't move because they had put a mesh and stent in my heart and that I couldn't stand up because I had a blocked femoral artery. I answered, yes, I have seen it. They gave me a saline solution in the intensive care unit until the next day, 
when they made me stand up. On the 15th at 3 p.m., I was already home, doing my normal routine without chest pain. Two weeks later, I was working normally, taking my medication. After a year, I started to feel slight discomfort in my sternum. During my trip to the beautiful city, I turned around several times and saw my body nearby, but I didn't care at all about leaving my body and continuing my trip to the beautiful city. I felt so much happiness inside myself while flying and also felt the breeze of cool air while traveling and the intensity of the air according to the speed. Thank you for watching the video until the end. Share it with those you love so that more people know that there is something beyond earthly life. That's all for now.